welcome to the television outreach of Rapha Revival Ministries. Experience the cutting edge end time ministry of Dr. Michael McDowell as he unveils God's prophetic program, line upon line, precept upon precept. The signs of the times are happening with great intensity and increased frequency. Like a woman in travail, and the pregnant heavens are about to release Jesus. This is the terminal generation. And this is Midnight Cry. Readying the redeemed, warning the world. Welcome to Midnight Cry. I am Crystal Guerra. And tonight we have another wonderful message entitled Chronological Retrogression. Now let's join Dr. Michael McDowell. Praise the Lord, everybody. We welcome you to another exciting episode of Midnight Cry. I'm Dr. Michael McDowell, Senior Pastor at Rafa Revival Ministries, and it's a joy, as usual, to be coming into your home. Glory to God. We have a wonderful program lined up for you tonight. And I want you to know that uh, Bible prophecy is the most relevant and the most exciting topic to be preaching in these days, because the return of Christ is at hand. I want you also to understand that uh, the return of Jesus is the final step in the exaltation of Christ, which began with his ascent from Hades, and then his resurrection, then his ascension, and now his present day intercessory ministry, where he's seated at the right hand of God, where he ever lives to make intercession for us. Where he ever lives to make intercession for us. And the Bible says the final step in his exaltation is when he comes back the second time to take control of planet Earth and to build his millennial kingdom. As the poet says, let the usurper get off the throne. The king has come to claim his own. Bible prophecy. Amen. Let's get into it. The title of tonight's program is Chronological Retrogression. Blip, 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 blip. Chronological Retrogression. Yes, you heard it right. It's a long, long, multi-syllabic word. Chronological Retrogression. What does it mean? Simply people, you know, in the days before you were saved, uh, you used to go to some parties and they were called back in times parties. Amen. Well, because they played music from an era gone by. Well, chronological retrogression simply means to go back in time. Amen. And what is chronological retrogression? Well, chronological retrogression is a feature of apocalyptic literature. It's part of the apocalyptic hermeneutic. Amen. And if you don't understand this, you will misinterpret very, very badly. So chronological retrogression, let me see if I can give you an example. A prophet is prophesying and he is rolling along very nicely in a very proper chronological order. Then all of a sudden he stops. And he backs up and he goes back in time to an event that took place to a previous event and he begins to give you details on that event. But the trick is he does not tell you that he has stopped and gone back in time. You have to figure it out for yourself. That's where the uh, proper apocalyptic hermeneutic comes in. So we're going to be dealing with chronological retrogression and we're going to see a really powerful example of this in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verses 32 to 35. And verses 32 to 35 deal with the rebirth of Israel. Now, if you've been following all of our other programs, this is program five. And we have brought you to the point where we have shown you all the major divisions of the seven major divisions of Matthew 24. Last week, we stopped at division number four. And in division number four, we brought you all the way to the second advent of Christ. We went through the introduction where God, Jesus was going to explain to the disciples and dispel their confusion. Then we looked at verses 4 through 14, which were the tribulations superimposed upon the inter-advent period. And we looked at the, the, chronological, the interpretive key being uh, all these at the beginning of sorrows in verse 8. And we saw that the signs are going to begin happening like a pregnant woman who's about to deliver. They're going to be happening very close together, very frequently and with great intensity. And from there, we went on to the... the, the the, the, the other division, the next division, was verses 15 to 28, where we looked at the second half of the tribulation called the Great Tribulation that begins with the abomination that maketh desolate and ends with Armageddon. And then immediately after the tribulation of those days in verses 29 to 31, we see the actual second advent of Christ. Now, all that is proceeding in a proper chronological order. But all of a sudden, in verse 32, the prophet stops, pulls the bricks, and he goes back in time. Where does he go back from? He goes back from the second advent of Christ all the way back to the rebirth of Israel. Now, we know for a fact that the second advent of Christ has not yet happened. But the rebirth of Israel has already happened. 
In fact, I have people who attend my church who were born in the very year that Israel became a nation again, 1948. And the Bible clearly says that uh, when Israel is reborn, the generation that sees that happen shall not pass away until all the end time things are fulfilled. Let's read from verses 32 to 35. It says here, now learn a parable of the fig tree. The fig tree is a prophetic symbol of the nation of Israel. When Jesus cursed the fig tree on his way to Jerusalem, just a few days before his passion, before his uh, crucifixion, uh, that was symbolic of Jesus setting aside dealing with national Israel, and he was going to begin to deal, amen, with, a, with anyone who called upon the name of the Lord, Jew or Gentile, would be saved. And we now live in that gap, that gap called the church age. So it's very important to understand that the fig tree is a prophetic symbol of Israel. God has laid aside the fig tree. The, the shriveling up or the cursing of the fig tree is symbolic of that. It goes on to say, when its branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye, when you see all of these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Just as the blossoming of the fig tree emphasizes a certain season. Let, let, let me bring it home. You know, uh, we have a saying in Trinidad, it says mango season, pot tondong. Amen. When it's mango season, you know mango season is coming because the tree begins to blossom and mango season is, is, is just about there. So, so the fig tree in Israel, this is not a banana tree or this is not a, a what you may call it, lakatang or gamichel fig. This is a, a fig that is native, a type of fruit that is native to the Middle East. When the fig tree blossoms, Amen. It's a, it's, it signals a certain time of year. He's saying likewise. When you see all the things that we have just been discussing in, in Matthew chapter 24, know that the end times are at hand. Let's just go on. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. He ends by saying, this is a sure word. Heaven and earth may pass away. Anything can happen, but this word I'm speaking here, this shall not pass away. Let's go a little deeper. So literally, the passage is saying, the generation that was born around 19, in, ni in the year 1948, that generation, which uh, people born in 1948 are approximately 71 years old right now. People born in 1948, that generation shall not utterly perish from this earth until all these end time things are fulfilled. On the strength of that, we can say that this is definitely the terminal generation. And the rebirth of the nation of Israel is, a, is one of the strongest prophetic signs there is in Scripture, that we are living in that terminal generation. It is the beginning of the end. The, these are the last days. Definitely, these are the last days. But there is something else of great significance that you must know. There is a parallel passage in the book of Luke, chapter 21. In fact, in the Synoptic Gospels, Mark 13, Matthew 24, and Luke 21, are practically parallel passages. They speak of the end times. They're apocalyptic chapters. And, but, but still, you still have to do a very careful analysis to be, to be able to merge those chapters together. But let me just read a little section of Luke chapter 21. And this is, these are verses 29 to 33. This is shocking, very shocking. And he spake to them a parable. Now Luke is going to go a little further than Matthew. And he spake to them a parable. Behold the fig tree and all the trees. Did you see that? Behold a fig tree and all the trees. When they now shoot forth, ye see and know of your own selves that summer is now nigh, nigh at hand. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away. But my words shall not pass away. What on earth, what in the world is Jesus and the Bible speaking about? Okay, so the fig tree is a symbol of the nation of Israel. And we are living in a season uh, since May 1948, when the fig tree blossomed and budded and came back on the scene. Israel was miraculously against all odds reborn. The, the, the prophets say, have you ever heard of such a thing? That a nation should be born in a day? That as soon as Zion travailed, she brought forth. I mean, this is lit literally the miracle of our time. That the nation of Israel that was scattered for more than the, the African diaspora, scattered for 2,500 years, came back together in one day and became a nation again. That's a miracle. 
But the Bible says not only Israel. When you see Israel come forth, when Israel blossoms, when Israel becomes a nation again, you're living in the end times. But not only Israel, not only the fig tree, but all the trees. What on earth is God referring to? Well, I'll tell you. Something happened in the second half of the 20th century. And it was, and it was so significant that the world maps had to be redrawn. Maps of the globe had to be refashioned to, sh to reflect new nations that all of a sudden just emerged, seemingly from nowhere. What am I talking about? Well, you know there was a, a president of, of the USSR, of the Soviet Union, by the name of Mikhail Gorbachev. Well, one of the things he did was cause the dissolution of the Soviet Union. When the Soviet Union was dissolved, something very significant happened. Immediately as that nation was dissolved, a number of other nations came into being. Can I list some of them for you? In fact, 15 different nations were born, and all the trees, here are the, here are the nations, Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarusia, Estonia, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyz, Kyr this is a difficult one to pronounce, Kyrgyzstan, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldova, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. All those nations were born as soon as the Soviet Union was dissolved. And then, and, and then the, the, the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, SFR Yugoslavia, also disintegrated. And the seven nations were born. Here are the nations that came forth from the dissolution of the Yugoslavian Republic. Uh, Bosnia, Herzegovina, Croatia, Macedonia, Montenegro, Serbia, Slovenia, and Kosovo. And, and seven nations, seven nations from Yugoslavia's breakup, 20, 15 nations from Russia's breakup, 22 different nations came back into being. Amen. So in 1948, Israel, in the 1980s and, 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 and late 1980s and early uh, 90s, uh, Soviet Union broke up. And then a little later on, the Yugoslavian Republic broke up. And so the, the 23 different nations have re-emerged in that time. That is significant. The Bible says when you see the fig tree blossom and all the other trees come back into being, we are living in the closing days of time. There is nothing more uh, significant than that. We are living people in the terminal generation. Young people, still in your teens or you're, still, you're, you're not tenors yet, we are living in days when it's possible that you may not grow up, you may not have enough time to grow up to get married. I'm sorry to inform you. Amen. But uh, that's how close we are. The, the, the hour is significant. Look up, the Bible says, for your redemption draweth nigh. Let's go forward now to Division 6. Division 6, verses 36 to 44, deal with one of the most significant events in all of Scripture. A lot of people don't believe it uh, because it is a supernatural event. This is not a normal event. This is a, it is a supernatural event. So those who practice a type of Christianity does, that does not adhere to the supernatural, they are not going to believe this too readily. So let's read Matthew 24, verses 36 to 44. Interesting portion of Scripture. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no not the angels of heaven, but my Father only. But as the days of Noah were, that means Noah, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. That's a hint. He's giving us a hint. For in the days that were before the flood, antediluvian earth, the first world, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. It's going to be sudden. It's going to be quick. But there are other things that are very significant from these few words we will see in a little bit. Verse 40 says, then shall two be in the field. One shall be taken, another left. Two, two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken, and another left. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord doth come. But know this, that if the good man of the house had known in what watch the thief would come, he would have watched and would not have suffered the house to be broken. Therefore, be ye also ready. For in such an hour as he think not, the Son of Man cometh. This passage begins with, for no man knoweth the day nor the hour. And constantly through the passage, it repeats 
that nobody will know the exact timing. If you knew when a thief was coming to rob your house, you'll be sitting up and waiting for him. Amen. So, so thieves don't announce what time they're coming to rob you. And in the same way, this is an, un an unannounced event. No man will know the day nor the hour. Now, let me examine that claim. Do you know that, uh, now we're speaking of the rapture. Do you know if the rapture takes place tomorrow and God forbid that you are left behind. But if you are left behind, here's what you will be able to do. You will be able to, to go to your calendar and circle the day that all your Christian friends were raptured and you stayed behind. And when you circle that day, you can actually count chronologically on your calendar. And seven years after that will be the second advent of Christ. He will return because the scriptures teach that. Understand that. So if you are left behind at the rapture, God forbid, I'm not wishing that for you. But if you are, you will be able to know exactly when Jesus Christ is going to put in his second advent appearance. You would, but, but if the Bible says that this is an event that no man knows the day nor the hour, then the Bible must be speaking of a pre-rapture earth, an earth where the rapture has not yet taken place. That's how one of the reasons we know that this passage, passage definitely speaks of the rapture of the church. Amen. The Bible is encouraging us to be ready. Also, there's a, a strange, strange little clue buried in this passage of Scripture. And uh, it's going to sound strange when I enunciate it to you, but then I'll back it up with another portion of Scripture. Let's look at uh, verse 38, verse 37. There's a reference to the days of Noah, a strong reference. As the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of Son of Man be. And then it says this. Here's one of the characteristics of the day of Noah. That they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage. I want to ask you a question. Who is they? That plural personal pronoun, they. Who are they? And let me, let me, uh, let me reinforce this. By looking at a passage of scripture in Daniel chapter 2 and verse 43, uh, and the passage I'm speaking about must be read in the KJV, the King James Version, to get its full impact. Daniel, of course, is speaking in chapter 2 about the statue with a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, and feet of iron and clay. And he's speaking about the specific time when the feet uh, of the feet with iron and clay. Now, those of you who have studied Bible prophecy, those feet of iron and clay speak of the reformed Roman Empire in the end time. And one of the interpretations of the mingling of the iron and the clay is, is recorded in uh, Daniel chapter 2 and verse 43. Here's what it says. One little part of it says this. They, my question therefore is, who are they? And let me reinforce that by going back to the book of Daniel, chapter 2, and verse 43. In this passage, Daniel is speaking about the statue that Nebuchadnezzar dreamt, with a head of gold, chest and arms of silver, belly and thighs of brass, legs of iron, feet of iron and clay. And this passage in Daniel 2, 43 speaks of the feet of iron and clay and the mixture of iron and clay. And it, it elucidates one of the interpretations of the iron and clay coming together. And so now the feet of iron and clay are smack dab in the middle of the end time, the reformed Roman Empire that I referred to in one of our programs. Here's what it says. It says, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Let me, see, let me read that again. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. And here's my question. If they are mingling themselves with the seed of men, the seed of men means the offspring of mankind. If they are mingling themselves with the seed of men, then they cannot be the seed of men. They must be something distinct from the seed of men. And in scripture, that sort of contrasting, uh, those sort of contrasting words, I give them a very big uh, literary name. They are called a lexicographical antithesis. Two things meant to be very diverse from each other. They shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Is it possible that the they of Daniel 2.43 is the same as the they of Matthew 24, verses 38, 37 and 38? Well, we will see a little later when we go into the antediluvian earth in detail. But very intriguing, you, you must say. Let's go now to chapter, the seventh division of the book of Matthew, the final division. And 
This is from verses 45 to 51. And without reading through the passage, here's what, it's an admonition. It's warning us who are living in this time to watch and pray. Amen. To make sure that we, we keep ourselves in a, a, a constant state of readiness. Amen. Because no, the, the, the rapture is not announced. I want to say this. Watch and pray. Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's look up for redemption draweth nigh. Let's warn the wicked that he is coming soon. And uh, we need definitely in this time to, to keep uh, spiritually alert for the return of the Lord. We need to watch and pray. This concludes the, the chapter. And uh, we need, therefore, as believers in this time, to be vigilant, amen, to be sober, to be watchful, to walk with the Lord. For these are days when the Lord can put in an appearance suddenly. In these closing days, therefore, the Bible admonishes us to be watchful, to be vigilant, to be sober, to be discerning. For in such an hour as we think not, the Lord cometh. Let's make sure that when the Lord comes, we as his servants are doing the things we ought to be doing. Let's not be caught unaware. Let me, finally, let me say this. There is a theory called the partial rapture position, the partial, partial rapture theory. And it says this. It says, if you are a Christian believer and you are not living the life as, as a committed Christian, if you, are, if, you, if you are doing things that are untimely or unseemly as a child of God, amen, as a son or daughter of the Most High, the Bible teaches from this passage that if you are not living right, even though you're a believer, in the economy of the rapture, because remember, we are, these, these are going to be days of revival. These are going to be days when, when the church is on fire. Either you are hot or you're cold. If you're not doing what God would want you to do, you will not go up with the church. You will be left behind. That's the partial rapture position. I am an adherent of the partial rapture position. That you must uh, be not only be a believer in this end time economy, this rapture economy. You must also be living the life. You must be walking like a Christian. You must be talking like a Christian. Pardon my, my reference. You must be smelling like a Christian. You must be a Christian through and through if you are to be raptured in this time of revival and breakthrough. Praise the Lord. So join us again next week for our next scheduled broadcast. And I'm going to be dealing exclusively with the rapture of the church. Very significant doctrine. We are going into depth and detail. God bless you. I thank you for joining with us. Amen. And uh, join us again uh, in our next scheduled program right here on MTM TV. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. We've come to the end of another exciting episode of Midnight Cry. Really hope you enjoyed the program. You know, I'm really privileged to have in the studio with me my wife, Epi. And we are co-founders and co-pastors of Rafa Revival Ministries, and she has been a tremendous support over the years. And one of the things I love is that she is also very, very passionate about the end-time teachings. Aren't you, Epi? Of course. Well, thank you for viewing Midnight Cry, television outreach at Rafa Revival Ministries. Rafa Revival Ministries is located at number 56, Little Martin Bay Road, Northwest Trinidad. Our services are on Sunday mornings at 9.15 a.m. We have our morning worship service. And on Thursdays at 6.30 p.m. We have our Bible study and prayer meeting. So why not come on down, pay us a visit, and your life will never be the same again. Because at Rafa, we encourage you to rise up, release your potential, and rock your world for Jesus.